So I, I smoothed out the fret ends and balanced the frets on that guitar. Uh, and I was going to do an episode where I told you how to do that, but I realized I'm not 100% positive on how I got the results I got, although I'm happy with the results. And I'm going to give you links to the to the the videos I watched that showed me how to do it. I do not feel comfortable telling you how to do that. Because if you screw up your neck, you have screwed up your neck, and then you're getting a new neck. So we're not going to do that. But that guitar... I built that guitar. It's the first guitar I've ever built, and I learned a lot building it. Uh, it was a really crazy process, uh, and uh, it, it guitars, it guitars good. Um, and I'm, this video isn't going to be like I bought a guitar body and then I became a master guitar builder. Uh, this this video, this series of videos, is actually going to be about. Um, the, the, the sources I used to make the guitar, the stuff that worked well, uh, the stuff that didn't work well because I screwed up, uh, the stuff I had to kind of plow through, and the stuff I kind of had to guess at. Um, so, I hope you're into that, because that's what we're going to do for the next couple episodes of Learning Curve. So what happened was when I started playing guitar again, I realized that if I could become good at fixing and modding guitars, I could save a lot of money uh, and I could get the guitars I want. And I live in the middle of nowhere, so if I want something done on a guitar, it's not like I can just go down the block and hand it to a luthier. So I did a couple of basic things. I swapped out a wiring harness on an Epiphone Wildcat. I put in, uh, uh, switched the pots on a Strat. Uh, and uh, I found that the, in the internet, as you well know, is full of information if you're willing to look it up. Uh, and then I, I was on uh, Facebook Marketplace and I came across an unfinished body for a Billy Bow guitar. The Billy Bow guitar was invented by the great Bo Diddley. If you are not familiar with his work, stop watching this video, go watch some Bo Diddley videos, and then come back. Right? The guy's amazing. So Bo Diddley created that unique design in 1959. Then a gentleman that history only knows is Giuliano. Uh, Giuliano was a luthier that worked at, uh, at Gretsch. And so Bo Diddley told him what he wanted, gave him some sketches. Giuliano turned it into a guitar using Gretsch necks and Gretsch hardware. Bo and Giuliano also created a guitar known as the Cadillac, which you can see in old clips being played by himself and by the Duchess. Bo Diddley gave one of his original Jupiter Thunderbirds to Billy Gibbons, and Billy Gibbons loved the guitar and wanted to take him out on the road with it. But it's precious and unique, and he didn't want to destroy it, so he contacted Gretsch, and they reintroduced the guitar, they recreated it, and then they put it out on the market and redubbed it the Billy Bo. Now, how this came into my possession, I was playing a show in La Crosse, Wisconsin, and uh, a lot of times when I travel, I look at stuff on Facebook Marketplace just to see if there's anything out there that I want, and I came across this guitar body, and I sent an email to the guy, and I never heard back from him. Um, now, I'm an insomniac, so that means sometimes I wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning and I just go with it. So this was one of those days, so about 5.30, I'm driving uh, from La Crosse onto the next gig, and I get a message from the guy, uh, and he's like, come on out, you can have it. Uh, so I turn the car around. This guy lives on a farm in the middle of nowhere, and it is like 10, 20 degrees below zero. The sun is just starting to peak up. It's cloud, like it's foggy, like there's frozen moisture in the air. And you don't even take a, gra like a, a real road to get to his place. You have to drive down a dirt road that's covered in snow in the middle of nowhere. Here's the thing, when I was a kid, if people had tattoos, it meant they were pirates. I realized since then, uh, having tattoos now means that you have enough money to buy a tattoo. Uh, and that's the same with riding a Harley Davidson. I live in the Dakotas. We have bikers all over the place. You can't really judge a person based on their tattoos or their motorcycles. But it's 6 o'clock in the morning. I don't know this guy. We're super secluded. There's no one to hear me scream. So this is like every other Facebook marketplace exchange I've ever made. I'm either gonna go home with a really cool guitar body, or 
I'm going to wake up in an ice-filled bathtub in a random hotel room while those guys sell my kidneys on the dark web. Those are the only two things that could happen. There's no other scenario. Anyway, turns out he's a great guy as far as I could tell. In the, in the three minutes that we hung out, he seemed like a good egg. I gave him my money, he gave me a guitar body. End of transaction, everybody's happy. So now I have this unfinished guitar body and I have to figure out how to turn it into a guitar. So the next couple of videos are gonna be about just kind of the mistakes I made, the things I learned, the things I did right, the things I do different, uh, and just about persevering, you know. There was a lot of, a lot of leaps of faith in this guitar that, uh, that turned out really well, and I'll talk about that on future episodes. So for the next couple of weeks, it's gonna be the, the making of the Billy Bow on Learning Curve. I hope you're into that. We'll see you next time.